So let's talk about the myth and scam of non-duality spiritual awakening. I want to thank Scott Killaby, whose article I found online that inspired this video. He really nailed it, and I really liked what he wrote. So the major myth and scam of non-dual spiritual awakening is essentially this. So in the beginning, when you're on the spiritual path, ego and personality is out here, out front, and the awareness, the essence, yourself, your true self is way buried back here. So the process of spiritual awakening essentially is this, a flip occurs so that now awareness and your true self is here and ego personality is back here. This is the actual truth of what happens during spiritual awakening. But what many people falsely believe and the unintentional scam of many of these types of teachers is that this happens, is that ego goes away. And that's not true. That is absolutely not true. So I sat with many of these teachers, I hung out with many of them, and I want to, to be clear here, I want to share with you some of the teachers in this group so that you know the category that I'm talking about. This is not all of them, but this is a short list that I put together. Adyashanti, Arjuna Nick Arda, Andrew Cohen, Gangaji, Leo Lozawick, Eckhart Tolle, Muji, Ken Wilber, Rupert Spira, Lisa Cairns, Jeff Foster, and the uh, sort of father of them all, Poop, uh, uh, Papaji or uh, Poonjaji. So, I hung out with many teachers in, in this non-dual Neo-Advaita Vedanta group and over a course of about 15 years served me very well, uh, but it took overcoming this scam and this, um, this myth part about spiritual awakening to actually have it benefit me. Uh, I was depressed and my depression went away. I was feeling very separate, isolated, not not okay here in this world. And then I became, um, I, I understood who I really was and was healed and was no longer depressed. And I didn't, I, I no longer feel isolated. I no longer feel separate from the, the, you know, the world and existence. But my ego is still here. It's absolutely still here. Ask my wife, ask my son. And what the scam and the myth is in these these teachings is that you are led to believe, and again, this is unintentional or un unconscious, it's just bad teaching, is that, again, when you're starting out, ego's here, awareness is back here, that this happens, and then this, the myth is that the ego drops away and goes away. But it doesn't. Ego stays here, okay, and it just kind of comes and goes. It kind of comes and goes, but it's always, you need ego. You need ego to decide whether or not it's a good thing to cross the road when there's heavy tra traffic. You need ego to you know, pay the bills. You need ego to um, eat f nutritional food all day long. There's nothing wrong with ego. And as a matter of fact, that is one of the hallmarks of the awakened state is that you become okay with ego. You aren't fighting it anymore. You see it as a utensil and as a utility. But along with it, basically, what I'm saying is that you're, you're not free, absolutely free from suffering. It's an impossibility. You still got this physical body. You've still got emotions, you've still got a mind, and all that shit's imperfect, trust me, as you well know. So that doesn't, when ego is still in place, all of that's going to be there. It's not, that's, that's part of the myth. It's like, non, to, to paraphrase um, Scott Killaby in his article, non-duality is a very, and, and realizing is a very life-changing and profound thing, and, and I attest to that, it is. But, as he also said, it is not the answer to the end of all suffering, and I agree with that as well. So that, that's part of what many individuals mis are, are kept locked in a cage and, 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 and prevent further growth in these non-dual teachings and circles because they have this idea of what it should be like. They have this the perfect idea of what it should be like, and and it like and, like one of the one of the most common myths while you're in is that, is that you're just gonna like if you just listen enough to to Rupert Spear Rupert Spear's intellectual argument enough that you're gonna just oh aha I got it now I'm oh yeah of course that's who I am and now I'm oh everything is light and beautiful and I'm free of all suffering because I know who you know I know exactly who I am and I I am that. I am that, and it, it's <laughs> you ain't that. You're all you're you're, you're more you're the sloppy, uh, um, 
a con wild and crazy roller coaster ride of life. Sure, you wake up to who you are. There is truth to that. And sure, you, you find out a fundamental part of who you are. There is truth to that. But that does not exempt you from the pains and sorrows and ups and downs of life. So that is the myth. It's like getting rid of that, that um, wildly inaccurate, crazy-assed, fictional, uh, non-dual pink elephant in the room is a must. You have to let that go because then that allows you see to here's this is a very important point it allows you to green light your own spiritual awakening including your flaws including your limitations it allows room in spiritual awakening for your flaws and limitations and and um and uh, not so shiny parts. It includes, you see, your shadow and your wounds and your hurts and your pains. If you can allow that to happen, then the the absolute profound and amazing thing of of the switch happening can happen to you. Indeed, there is awakening. I, I went through it myself. I had this moment where I was reading an article online and I just had this final thought of, oh, there is, oh, I get it. There is no self. There is no, I, there is no high self. There's no low self. And, and it's like, I just kind of snapped out of it, but it wasn't a, a complete and utter like black and white aha moment. I, I really had to sit with it for a little while. And I noticed what I mostly noticed was that this sense of anxiety and separation and depression was completely gone. And then because I had worked my way through the myth and the scam of non-duality, the myth and scam of spiritual awakening, I, I realized, oh, this is what spiritual awakening is. It's not this grandiose, you know, enlightenment thing that is so often sold definitely in, in, in India, um, but, but unfortunately and I think unintentionally is sold through all of the non-dual teachers um, that are running around and have been running around in America since uh, the uh, the mid mid 90s. And and again, those teachers that I listed, I, I, there's nothing wrong. Every teacher is is a is a musician, and all music is valid. And and some of those musicians are they're like Bruce Springsteen's and rock stars. And other musicians are just, they're just local jazz musicians or local like um, like bluegrass music, you know. And um, but they're all and, and and but they're all musicians and they all have the great points and they, and they all have good songs and they all have bad songs. <laughs> so I I wish for you that you really come to terms with this myth um, and scam of uh, and include that in your work, include that in your teaching. It will profoundly help you. It'll allow you to make strides. It'll real. It'll allow you to include your own imperfections in your own. Uh, spiritual badass knowing thyself awakening. I hope this has helped you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.